Hello, I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Harvick, the cleric of chaos and inhabitant of the chaos realm, is neither an evil entity nor a good one. Harvick believes in anarchy, a state of disorder due to the absence or non-recognition of authority. His insanity is only focused towards disrupting the realms or opposing order and supporting lawlessness. Always aiming to spread discord, Harvick is known to be a provocateur in the the Order Realm, also known as Sado. At the same time, he is revered as a hero by the inhabitants of the Chaos Realm due to the antics that he pulls. Although seemingly unhinged and insane at first sight, Harvick is an excellent fighter and tactician. His fighting style consists of completely savage and bizarre movesets through which he is able to dish out devastating amounts of damage to his opponents. He also possesses an unbelievable healing factor, and while other combatants feel pain, Harvick experiences pleasure and joy when hurt. Although his role in the games has not been explored that much, he has played a substantial role in the current timeline through the Mortal Kombat X comic series. Join us as we discuss the lore behind the Cleric of Chaos. Before we get into our explanation, a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Very small click for you, but for us, it means a great deal. Thank you so much. Let's go. Harvick's extensive lore in the Mortal Kombat universe. What makes him a unique character? The original timeline. Because of their beliefs and their way of life, Order Realm and Chaos Realm detest each other from the very beginning. While the people of Sado believe that the insanity and mayhem that Chaos Realm is known for needs to be controlled, Chaos Realm believes that their ways of an anarch society are superior. Due to this, these two realms have been locked in combat for eternity. Harvick makes his first appearance in in the Mortal Kombat universe when Shujinko encounters him during his journey to the Chaos Realm. It was around this time that the Sidon Guard was attempting to invade the Chaos Realm and get control of their water. This was because of the fact that the Chaos Realmers worshipped water due to its uncontrolled, shapeless and chaotic nature. Water's existence is heavily inclined to their beliefs and hence the inhabitants of Chaos Realm hold it in high regard. Wanting to stop the Sidon Guard at all costs, Havok enlisted the aid of Shujinko in return for guiding him towards the ancient labyrinth that would give him the access to the Kamadogu of the Chaos Realm. Havok was successful in fending off the Sidon Guard with the assistance of Shujinko, and in keeping his end of the promise, he helped Shujinko in his quest. With the return of Dragon King Onaga, Havok got to know of his plan to unite the Kamadogus of the realms. This posed a direct threat to the never-ending turmoil of life, in Havok's opinion and hence he decided to put a halt to the schemes of the Dragon King. He planned to have the heroes align with Shujinko to fight and defeat Onaga, after which Havok would seek this opportunity to consume the Dragon King's heart, granting him his necromantic abilities. On his way, he encountered heavily wounded former Earthrealm warrior Karbal, who was on the cusp of death. Seeing an opportunity being presented to him, Havok decided to nurse Karbal back to full health so he could corrupt him and get the idea planned in his mind to reform the Black Dragon organization. Though not convinced yet, Karbal agreed and Havok was successful in bringing back an organization that brought chaos to the Earthrealm. Havok, alongside Karbal and his new recruits of the Black Dragon, Kira and Cobra, made his way into Outworld. Upon the defeat of the Dragon King Onaga, Havok waited for his time to strike. Seeing the warriors that Shujinko had brought alongside him, such as the soul of Liu Kang, Ermac, and Nightwolf. Havok knew that he was outnumbered and withheld his plan of action. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Havok only makes a very brief appearance. He is seen in Shinnok's Spire, where he battles Tivan but is defeated. It was later revealed that the whole sequence that followed Tivan and Shinnok in Shinnok's Spire was nothing but illusions conjured by Shinnok to test the might of Tivan. So Havok's minor appearance was not actually real. Havok's final canonical appearance takes place place in the Battle of Armageddon, as we see him fighting on the side of the forces of darkness. Like every other combatant present in the battle, Havok was killed. The current timeline. Although not appearing in the games apart from one instance where Shang Tsung name drops Havok in Mortal Kombat 11 after he sends Garrus to the Chaos Realm. Where did you send him? Chaos Realm. 
Havoc will keep him entered. Havoc plays an essential role in the Mortal Kombat X comic series, which is considered to be canon to the current timeline. Havoc was approached by the sorcerer Quan Chi after the Elder God Cynic's defeat. Quan Chi offered Havoc the powers of blood magic, and in return, he would reclaim Shinnick's amulet so that the fallen Elder God could make his return from the depths of where Raiden and the Elder Gods had banished him to. Havoc's ultimate plan was to betray Quan Chi and keep the powers of the amulet at his disposal. To bring his plan to fruition, Havoc was now in search of new pawns. He bought Reiko from Outworld, but found him in a vulnerable position as he was contemplating suicide. Havoc created a false prophecy in order to sway Reiko to his side. After approaching Reiko, Havoc reveals his identity as the Cleric of Chaos and takes the dagger that Reiko was preparing to end his life with. Havoc then promises Reiko that his blood will rain and then stabs him after stating that it must flow first. He does this to give him a taste of the Blood Code's power, the power that is prophesied to turn him into a god. After this exchange, Reiko joins Havoc's side in pursuit of his ascension to godhood. With his new powers of blood magic, Havoc could infect and subsequently enslave anyone affected with it as per his will using the Kamadogu. The first warrior that Havoc enslaved was a newly resurrected Kwai Liang, who remained under his control for years. During this time, Havoc was also obsessed with recruiting Scorpion, as he saw him as an agent of chaos. Planning to enrage Hanzo Hisashi to the point that he turns into Scorpion once more, Havoc possessed a warrior from the Shirai Ryu clan named Forest Fox. He then used Fox to slaughter members of a newly revived Shirai Ryu. Fox was ultimately killed by Takeda Takahashi, but Havoc was able to hint towards the connection between Quan Chi and the Komodogus to Hanzo. Distressed, Hanzo and Takeda sought Raiden's guidance, but Havoc was able to possess the Thunder God and subsequently used him to battle the two Shirai Ryus. During the battle, as Takeda was on the brink of death, Raiden's blood was purified of the blood magic that was corrupting him, and he regained his senses. Although it seemed as if Raiden was fine, Havoc was still able to overhear and observe the conversation the three were having, and he was waiting for the perfect opportunity to enslave Raiden once more. Next we see Havoc speaking to Reiko in Outworld. They discuss how they have discovered that the blood magic from Kamadogu is the source of Kotal Khan's power. As Havoc reveals to him that he already knows the location of the daggers, Reiko displays his frustration over not having control of Outworld's throne. To this, Havoc responds by reassuring him that once they find the daggers, he will have no need for the throne, as he will ascend to become a blood god. When Hanzo and Takeda confront Kwai Liang, Havoc, who had possessed Kwai earlier, tries to instigate a fight between the two parties. Kwai mocks Scorpion at Havoc's bidding, while Havoc stands in Shang Tsung's flesh pits, experimenting on a corpse and goads about how he will possess both the Kamadogu and Scorpion's souls soon. As Kwai Liang and Hanzo Hisashi engage in battle, Sub-Zero shows a clear advantage due to his cryomantic abilities being boosted by blood magic. Following this, Takeda steals the Kamadogu from Kwai's possession, and Havoc uses the last of the blood magic in Kwai's blood to let out a massive ice storm which freezes a section of a city and traps both Scorpion and Takeda in ice. Subsequently, as Kwai regains control over his body, Hanzo attempts to free himself from the ice and continues the battle as he is not aware of Sub-Zero being possessed. Meanwhile, on Shang Tsung's island, Scarlet hands over Kotal Khan's Kamadogu to Havoc as he expresses his interest in the power possessed by Johnny Cage's family that was able to rival the power of the fallen elder god Shinnick. Later, as Reiko returns with Earthrealm's Kamadogus, Havoc reveals how he had Raiden collect three of the daggers for them. Because he had control over Raiden, every step that the Thunder God took to protect Earthrealm was a step that led Havoc closer to executing his plan. Now confident in his soon-to-be complete possession of the Kamadogus, Havoc heads to Earthrealm. He disguises himself by restoring the flesh on his lower jaw and nose and approaches the Karang Temple in the Henan province of China. He corrupts and possesses Shujinko and then awaits the arrival of Hanzo Hisashi and Takeda. Shocked to see him there, Hanzo and Takeda prepare to 
to attack, but Shujinko talks them down and proclaims Havok to be a man of God and their guest. Havok then successfully persuades Hanzo to have a conversation with him alone with the help of Shujinko. Havok then reveals to Hanzo that he was the perpetrator all along, the one who had corrupted not only Raiden but Forest Fox and Sub-Zero as well. After this, Havok threatens him and takes full control of Shujinko, who attacks Takeda. Enraged, Hanzo gives into Scorpion's persona and beats Havok with punches and kicks, backed with Hellfire to the point that he is nothing but flesh and bone. But as the situation worsens for the heroes, Havok uses the blood code to heal his injuries and rejuvenates himself back to full health before sending Hanzo flying through the chamber doors. As his victory is almost definite at this point, Havok starts boasting about how much chaos he spread. He talks about how Raiden is his puppet, Outworld is under constant civil war, and how the Shirai Ryu is finished, as he reveals Takeda being taken hostage by Shujinko. Hanzo then asks Havok why is that he desires to go through all this trouble, and he replies by saying that he wants his friendship and wants to liberate all the realms from the control of the Elder Gods and let mortals be the deciding factors. As Hanzo continues to resist Havok and does not allow Scorpion to be unleashed, Havok eventually kills him as he succumbs to his injuries. Confused as to why Scorpion did not come back from the dead as a wraith, Takeda reveals to Havok that Hanzo and Scorpion Scorpion were never two separate personas, instead Hanzo always made his own choices. Before leaving, Takeda vows to make Havok pay for his deeds. Havok returns to Shang Tsuing's island, only to see Reiko being attacked by Kotal Khan, Melina and Ermac. As Havok announces his presence, Kotal threatens him, but their hopes of ending this twisted game are dashed as he reveals that Raiden is still under his control. The Thunder God then charges at his foes and strikes them down with bolts of blood red lightning. With a possessed Raiden, Cossie Cage and Jackie Briggs at his side, Havok quickly overwhelms the Outworlders. He then orders for Raiko to be taken to the flesh pits for his revival by using these warriors' mortal blood. Calling them his champions, Havok explains how their blood will be a sacrifice and Raiko will be the vessel. Havok hands Raiko the goblet and exhorts him to drink so he can fulfill his destiny. Raiko agrees and Havok announces that Raiko's blood reigns. Havok then stabs Reiko with each of the Kamadogu, assisted by his blood code slaves. After the blood magic storm passes, Havok discovers himself in Reiko's grasp, while the general revels in his newly attained godliness. As Reiko's hunger grows, he yearns for sacrifice for his fulfillment. Havok expresses how he knew that Reiko would demand tributes, and hence he had planned accordingly. Revealing Kotel and Melina's armies, Havok states that they must be in the hundreds. Although Reiko devours all of the soldiers presented to him, his hunger isn't satisfied. Reiko starts groaning in immense agony and states how it feels like his body is eating him from the inside. Seeing his plan come to fruition, Havok starts gloating about how Reiko was never an actual candidate to attain godhood. He was always just a vessel for a real god. As Reiko's body tears itself apart, Havok approaches the general and gouges his eyes out by holding his head and pushing his thumbs into his eye sockets. He then crushes his head and tears apart his skull from the body. After killing Reiko, Havok turns his attention to the other warriors present there and reveals the amulet of Shinnok in his possession. He reveals how his plan all along was to attain the amulet of Shinnok through the use of the Komodogus. With the amulet around his neck and a Komodogu in his grasp, Havok stood over the Kotel and Raiden, Jackie and Cassie stood over Melina, Johnny and Sonya. Each of the Blood Code controlled warriors also had a Kamadogu in their hands, and Havok rants about how each individual here believed how they could reshape history after the defeat of Shinnok, stabbed the others. Havok continues by stating how they were all deluded, and how chaos can never be contained or resisted. Havok then stabs Kotel, and his pawns stab the others, resulting in all of them being possessed by Havok through the blood code. Subsequently, Havok turns to Ermac, and states how he has other plans for him. He then starts draining Ermac, using 
using the amulet of all the souls that he had collected. Havok discloses that Raiden's cosmic barriers defend the nether realm and simultaneously block it while Ermac writhes in anguish. However, he also adds that by imbuing the amulet with Ermac's souls, they'll be able to breach the barrier and conquer the realm. Before Havok can finish draining Ermac, his hand gets severed by the timely arrival of Takeda. Havok sends Jackie and Cassie to battle Takeda, but the Shirai Ryu warrior is able to defeat them and shows his determination to keep his promise to avenge the death of his master. Keeping his composure, Havok picks up his severed hand and reattaches it to his body. He then commands his pawns to attack Takeda, and the lone warrior is overwhelmed by the sheer number of highly potent warriors against him. Havok then gives Takeda an ultimatum. He gives him the option to sacrifice his blood to the Kamadogu and be enslaved by him, or to be reunited in death with his master. As Havok goads Takeda, he holds the amulet of Shinnok over him, as an exhausted and defeated Takeda accepts his fate. Havok then reaches closer to his victim, and Takeda headbutts the cleric as a refusal to ever be his slave. He then slams the boy down on the ground face first, but before Havok could deal the finishing blow, the hand he was holding the amulet with gets shot, and subsequently he drops it. Seeing as Devora approached him using Kotel's portal stone, Havok realized that she had brought along with her Kotel's loyal warriors as a backup. Distracted by the battle, Havok realizes that Takeda had tried scurrying away with the amulet. In their pursuit, Takeda threatens Havok with the power of the amulet. Having a deep understanding of the amulet and its powers, Havok is unfazed and continues to approach Takeda. He easily reclaims the amulet and blows the fallen warrior with a blast of energy from it. Havok soon realizes that Takeda has been imbued with the powers of the Jinsei, and hence he's been able to receive more punishment than his body should typically be able to withstand. Havok makes a fool of Raiden for thinking Shinnok's defeat meant peace had been achieved for all the realms, and declares it to be a perfect chance for chaos, warning that Earthrealm's demise would be just as insidious. Before Havok can murder Takeda, suddenly a resurrected Scorpion tears his head off his body. Havok, who is now just a head held in Scorpion's hand, could only watch in disbelief as he transported the two of them away. Shortly later, the Blood Code's control over everyone was finally dismantled. Havok's head, which was still alive, was carried over to the gates of Netherrealm. Scorpion then tossed it over to the Oni Moloch and Draman, who would bring the severed head over to their master, Quan Chi. Havok continued to rant to Scorpio about how he is an agent of chaos, whether he denies it or not, but his words were falling on deaf ears. He then talked to Quan Chi and stated that Netherrealm was forever doomed to chaos, just like every other realm that exists. Growing tired of his statements, Quan Chi crushed Havok's severed head with his foot, ending the havoc he had created once and for all. It's revealed by the authors that Havok was not dead, as he was still able to rejuvenate from his injuries, and he existed somewhere in the chaos realm after the end of this storyline. What makes Havok such a formidable opponent? Havok, a cleric of chaos, has a combat style that uses an odd mix of methods that may both confuse and annihilate the opponent's mind and body. He's able to revitalize himself by dislocating his own limbs or even recovering from traumas that should have killed him, such as a broken neck or a crushed skull, since his body is so distorted that he feels delight and pleasure instead of agony. Due to his unexpected nature, what can appear to be a struggle of life and death is really only a pleasant exchange of fists for him. The combat style that he follows revolves solely around cruelty and mayhem. Since he was able to corrupt the blood magic with the Kamadogu, which gave him the power to corrupt and control anybody who was struck by one of the daggers, including gods, it was revealed in the current timeline that Havok possesses some knowledge of sorcery. Havok is able to control others when in a separate domain, therefore there does not appear to be any restriction on the number of victims he may command at once, or even even the distance between them. Havok also has a healing factor, which enables him to easily reconnect severed limbs and withstand other lethal contortions like his neck cracking. He was even able to withstand being punched to death by Scorpion's hellfire-coated fists due to the blood magic enhancing his healing capabilities even further. A master tactician and combatant, Havok is a deadly opponent to fight against. As the battle rages on, Havok only gets more and more excited over the prospect of both receiving and inflicting endless amounts of pain.
The conclusion. True to his name and his realm of origin, Havok creates chaos wherever he goes. He loves the idea of being amidst the mayhem that he caused and constantly tries to make the realms fall under his concept of a utopian society. He's always focused on working to achieve what he wants, be it evil or be it good. As he would declare, he is an agent of chaos, always aiming, though, to spread discord. Havok's primary purpose in achieving more extraordinary powers was always to overthrow the regime that the Elder Gods had created, where the realms would function under their guidance as they maintained control and ensured everyone followed the rules that they had sanctioned. Rightfully so, Havok is embraced by the inhabitants of the Chaos Realm as a hero. This is because he is the embodiment of what the Chaos Realm thinks to be perfect, pure chaos. Although his role in the Mortal Kombat X comic series was a major antagonist, fans are still left yearning for his appearance in the games. It could be through DLC or even in the next Mortal Kombat game. This chaotic and unhinged character has always caught the eye of the fans and we will hopefully see more of him soon. If you've liked our content, don't forget to please leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you so very much. Be safe.